Thank you for downloading the Reach Church audio podcast from our Wednesday night encounter service. Here's this week's message from Landon Schott. Three stages of sonship. Three stages of maturity. Number one is God is my Lord. God is my Lord. Genesis 12 Verse 1 through 3, it says, The Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, from your father's house, to the land I will show you. He said, Go. The first stage, if you're taking notes, is God my Lord. God my Lord is the, is the relationship of sonship that teaches you yes and no. It's when he's your Lord, you do what he tells you to do. You guys have that video ready to play of, of my son, Preston? You got it? All right, play this video for a second. All right. Let's try this again. Are you ready to eat? What do you mean, no? What do you mean, no? <laughs> Don't shake me. Hey, eat. Come on, come on, yes, eat your dinner, eat your dinner, come on, take a bite, Noah, Preston, take, <laughs> is it that bad? Come on, take a bite, come on, dude, take, take a bite. You can cut it, because I think it goes on for about three more minutes of just that. So this is, this is my 10-month-old son who my wife just took out because he was acting a fool in the service. <laughs> and, and, and this is the stage that we're at. Does anyone have really, really young ones? So at this age in the relationship, I'm his Lord. What I mean is this, is I project, I determine what he does. It's yeses and no. Yes, eat this. No, don't do that. So, so at 10 months, he knows daddy, mommy, and no. Okay? Because the second we go over to Javier to Philia's house, I mean, he just starts looking for a light socket, just instantly looking for a light, and he'll start getting no, and he'll look up at you. Because he's knowing, okay, like, this, this is the first stage of sonship, that you do what you're commanded or you do what you're told to do. This is yes and no. Yes, you can have that. No, you cannot have that. No, you cannot have 12 pieces of gum in your mouth. No, you cannot stay up as long as you want. No, you cannot watch this show. No, you cannot. And, and, and it's all of these, these rules or it's all of these you know, guidelines, but the guidelines is to teach you parameters to keep you safe. It's to keep you healthy. Uh, children have to be told and taught and learn no anyone know what i'm talking about they don't want to eat that i don't know no one wants to eat that but i guess they need to eat that or that's what heather tells me okay poor guy <laughs> this is the beginning stage but here's the thing is a lot of christians don't move past this stage this is where you find what pastor daniel was talking about the legalistic Christians, that they live in the rules. They never can mature past just the rules. So now it's about I'm good because I obey rules rather than understanding what the rules are for. Does this make sense? Yeah. Because if you drive 120 miles an hour down 183 at five o'clock in the afternoon, someone's gonna die. So we don't, we don't put speed limits because we want to control everybody. We put speed limits to protect people. God's not trying to control us with rules. He's not trying to control us with behaviors. What he's trying to do is he's trying to help us guide our lives that we can live godly, righteous lives because he wants us to have good lives more than we want us to have good lives. The initial stage is God my Lord. 
This is what the Bible teaches me to do. This is how the Bible teaches me to live my life. This is why it's so important for you to go to leadership school and, and, and learn God's word. And every single day, learn God's word. It's a lamp unto our feet and light into our path. This will teach you the things that are wrong in life. Why it's wrong to get a divorce. Why it's, it's, it's wrong to swear at people. Why it's wrong to curse people. Why, how, how to properly raise your children. How to treat your wife. I used to always tell Heather, I'm the head of the household. You have to follow me. She would say, okay, give me something to follow. Yeah. Hey, you, you submit. <laughs> you submit. <laughs> when you submit to God, I submit to you. That's how the flow works. <sighs> I'm the head. I'm the neck. <laughs> oh, my God. Woman. <laughs> See, when you learn proper order... You know, every time I've gone to the Lord to complain about Heather, <laughs> no other husbands ever do that. <laughs> I meant to pray for my wife. It's amazing. He always gives me things about me. Every single time he shows me things in me. Because when you live according to God's word, he's going to line your life in a healthy life. Number one is he's God, my Lord. Number two is he's God, my father. Peyton is in the age of God, the father. So right now it's not just yeses and nos, but now I'm teaching her reason. I'm teaching her making good decisions. She's really into gymnastics right now, and she wants to do backflips on hardwood floors, and it's just not appropriate to do. So we're, we're teaching her. Now it's gone from not just the light sockets, but we're teaching her how, how, how to be safe and how do you make smart decisions and, and why. And, and if I had a dollar for every time she's asked me why in the last six months. And it's amazing. I thought if you just ignored it, it would stop, but it won't. <laughs> Why, dad? Why, dad? Why? It's learning. This is the second, this is the second relationship with God the Father. It's that communing, teaching me why. It's not just about now obeying. It's about why. Why were the laws like that in the Old Testament? Why did Jesus say the greatest commandment is to love God with everything in you? Start learning the whys of God's word. Why was Jesus always in God's house? It's always amazing when people get rebellious. They always want to do things outside of the church and never be a part of the church. But then you look at Jesus, who was always a part of the church. Why? Because he loved God's house. Why? Because the church, the gates of hell won't prevail against. Why? Because in the last days, the house of the Lord will be established over the heavens and the earth. Why? It's learning the why. Here's a why for, for Abraham in Genesis chapter 22. So in Genesis 12, he said, Go. Didn't know where, didn't know what, go. Going by faith. Genesis 22, sometime later, God tested Abraham. Look at this growth. He said to Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then he said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, go to Morak, sacrifice him, excuse me, Moriah, sacrifice him as a burnt offering under the mountain, I will show you. When he reached the place God told him about, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. He bound Isaac and he laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand. He took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Don't lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld your son, your only son. Watch, this is the moment where Abraham crosses over from God my Lord to now he's God my father. This is the moment where he trusts him so much with his word. Now God is explaining to him the why. I had to trust you, Abraham. I had to see what was in your heart. I had to see, was it, was it really about building my kingdom in my house or was it about people seeing me and knowing my name? Was it really about advancing the kingdom or was it about advancing your reputation? Does it really matter what, what, what people say or does it matter what I think? This is, this is God the Father. This is where there's relationship. This is where, where you're talking and communicating. 
It's been the most amazing thing. And as your children are go, growing and, you know, some of you guys know even more because, because from, from now till 18, you know, they, they're growing up in the, the stage where you're getting to know these little people. And as fun as babies are, that's great and it's cute. But the amazing thing about parenting is, is learning who these little people are going to be. Which gets us to our, our third and final stage. Now, if I could have Aaron come up and start playing child of God. James 2, 23. Let's put it on the screen. Look at this. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was accredited to him as righteousness. Look at that righteousness everywhere. And he was called, watch, God's friend. The third stage of sonship. One is he's your Lord. Two, he's your father. And three, he's your friend. I love watching the Criswalls and Teresa and Trissy. And they're so cute and they're little best friends, but they're mom and daughter. But they laugh and talk and they're friends. I can't wait for my son to get that age where he's my little hunting buddy, my golfing buddy, my traveling partner. We're going to go around the world together. He'll serve me one day till I'll start serving him. And it's friendship where it's not just do what I tell you to do, son, and, and, and save your money here and do these things and, and, and don't do this. But they start hitting that adulthood, that 18. They, they, they're leaving your house and, and now they're making their own decisions. And, and now you already parented them. You're, you're done being their Lord. You're done being that, that immediate father fix, figure. And, and, and now, now you're in that, that, that friend zone. Where it's, it's a real relationship. Now watch, he's never not your father. He's never not your Lord. But here's where it gets unhealthy. Is people come into the family or they give their heart to God and, and they hear a song saying, I'm a friend of God. And they want to immediately jump to being, I'm God's homeboy. But he's not my Lord first. He's not my father first. So now I'm just cool with God and me and God are cool and I don't have to tithe it and, and, and we can sleep around it. We don't have to even be married. We're married in God's eyes. And me and God have an understanding. All phrases of deception because you didn't learn the Lordship. You didn't learn that not in my house. <laughs> That's fine. You, 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 you want to come home at 1 a.m. at 16 years old? You can, go, you, can, you can live in your own home and come home whenever you want and cook your own food and buy your own toilet paper. How many remember buying toilet paper for the first time? That was awful. What a depressing moment. 18, all excited. I moved out on my own and then I went to the store. I'm like, what? This is what toilet paper costs? Peyton's four years old. I'm like, hey, use one square. One square. Are you hearing me? He's got to be Lord first. Then he's father. Then he's friend. And we know what you call that? Maturity. So no matter what stage you're in, I love this. Then it goes on to say this. Galatians 3.29 or 28, there is neither Jew nor Gentile nor slave nor free nor male or female for you are all one in Christ. Watch, no matter what level you're on, Lord, Father, or friend, we are all saved the same way by his marvelous grace. And he says this in verse 29, if you belong to Christ, then Abraham's seed and heirs according to his promise. Last thing I'll share with you and I'm closing. The only identity that God gives us in his word is a son or daughter. That's the only identity. That's who he sees us as his son and daughter. When the prodigal son went away in rebellion, 
when he was making mistakes, do you think he just left all of a sudden or do you think he was probably a punk for a long time before that? Don't you think that probably put a strain on the relationship even before he left? Do you think maybe even the prodigal son father might have been relieved that he left because he couldn't deal with them no more? But what happens? He kept the fatted calf. He kept the ring. He kept the robe. Watch, he kept the love. And you need to know this, no matter where you are in your life, God's waiting with this calf, with his ring, with his robe. I feel a Holy Ghost revelation with all three stages of relationship waiting for you to accept you for your true identity. Why don't you stand your feet and close your eyes? I'm going to have the prayer team come forward. I felt like we are supposed to get right with God. There's not a more powerful place that you can be than a place of repentance. And I don't know how it works with you, but for me, there's that little demonic voice that just tells me it's okay you're okay you're okay you don't need to repent you don't need to get right you don't need you're good enough you're good enough that flesh knows how to whisper all the right things and i felt in my heart that tonight god wants to bring you close again jesus came to bring you into relationship into sonship you're called as children. You're called as sons and daughters. He wants to be your Lord. He wants to be your God. He wants to be your friend. He is your father. Come into his sonship today. Come into his arms today. Come into his presence today. Tonight, I'm, we're going to say a prayer. And then if you need additional prayer, or you need breakthrough prayer or deliverance prayer. I know all of these people personally who are up here. And all of these people love Jesus and live godly lives. They're people of prayer. They're people of the word. I'd be honored if any of these people pray for me. In fact, many of them, I ask them to pray for me all the time because their prayers are powerful. And if you need prayer for anything tonight, there's breakthrough prayer that is inside their spirits. But I felt like tonight, just as a body, that we're supposed to get right. And you don't have to lift your hands. You don't have to come forward. This is between you and God from the smallest thing. Sometimes you just wander away. Maybe even as I was talking about the prodigal son and it's not even in my notes, but maybe you're in that early stage of that prodigal lifestyle. Maybe things in your life are pulling you away from God, pulling you away from God's house. Maybe even you're having these thoughts that you're supposed to leave Reach Church or pull away from your Christian friends and, and, and things in life are just kind of pulling you away. In fact, I feel strong in my spirit that some of you are going through that right now. Having lying spirits and, and, and deception coming just to take you out. Come close to the Father. Come close to His presence. Get right with the Lord tonight. Reach Church. If there's any sin in your life, if it's hidden or not hidden, let's get right with God tonight. His grace is here. His mercy is here. His forgiveness is here. Let's ask the Lord to cleanse our lives, to forgive us for the blood of Jesus, to cleanse us and wash us, to bring us into the right standing with God. Let's say this prayer all together, everyone out loud. Let's just say it as one voice. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sin, to cleanse me of all of my unrighteousness. Jesus, be Lord, be Father, be friend. I want to grow. I want to mature. I want to be used for your glory. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I don't agree with false identity. I'm a child of God. Come on, say it again bold. I'm a child of God. 
Say every curse spoken against me is cast down in Jesus' name. Every curse by a family member, every curse by a friend is null and void. It has no power and no permission to remain in my heart. I release love. I release forgiveness. Say, Jesus, deliver me in your righteousness. Holy Spirit, speak to me. Lead me. Guide me. I love you, Lord. Man, how many feel God's presence in this place? We're going to formally de dismiss. A Aaron, just sing that chorus over us one time. If you need any more prayer for anything or, or anything in particular, just come right now to the altar and, and, and our prayer partners and these awesome, awesome men and women of God are going to pray for you. But Father, I thank you, Lord, that you've called us sons. I thank you that you've called us daughters. We're, ch we're children of God. We love you, Lord. I thank you, God, for your presence here tonight. We Again, we just pray for the entire Reach Church staff. I pray that you would rock them tonight. I pray for breakthrough tonight. I pray that your spirit just gives them strength. I pray they come back filled up on fire, ready to take this city for you, Lord. Lord, I pray for just supernatural rest and vision on Pastor Chris and Melissa. Father, I pray, God, that, 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 that you would just put peace all around them. I pray no distress actions or hindrance to their rest and Lord I pray for your people right now I pray that this is a week of victory I pray that this is a week of success I come against every demonic attack that would try to uh, uh, come against their family I declare right now that the lost in their family Holy Spirit go and knock on their hearts bring them to you I pray that you would draw them to your house draw them to your presence and I pray the blessing of the Lord the promises of God are, are, are on their life and coming into existence we love you lord we praise you god in jesus mighty name amen once again thank you for tuning in to the reach church audio podcast for more information about reach church visit reachchurch.com